0091. That might be Krista. She said, yep. Is that Krista? Yeah. Hey, hey. Okay. I'm oh, on, there the, she is. on the road, just um, listening in and excited to hear. Yeah. Great, great update there. So. Perfect. Um, so I'll reiterate for the recording. We're recording now. 40 results on the survey thus far posted survey flyers throughout Damascata and generally good response so far. And now we'll take a look at the uh, RFI as it is, if you guys wanna pull that up. And George was the first pair, was it the first section that Mary Ellen sent us a edit for? Um, yes, uh, let me see. Uh, I've got it here. Basically, in the, it's in the second paragraph on the first page after uh, Damascata and Newcastle. Wait a minute. No, no. It, oh, no, it's down a little farther. The second Damascata, Newcastle. Uh, and it says, as an economic, cultural, and healthcare hub. And then for she crossed out retail activity and added for much of Lincoln County uh, and employment center within the county region. Uh, I think um, what I, pro I can probably do is, is send that, well, maybe if you have it, Evan, maybe you can just forward it off to you know everybody afterwards. Yep. Um, that's probably the easiest way to do it. That's what I'm looking for right this second. I think the added language made sense to me. It just yeah, it really it, it adds uh, the scope of Damascata. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, there's definitely there's no question. It's uh, it's good wording. So, and that was the only thing that she added in there. Otherwise, the whole thing is. I'm trying to copy and paste her changes right now. I've got it on a one different email. Well, if I could find it. But more importantly, um, beyond that, we need to solidify some dates as to the bottom of the first section here. The committee anticipates receiving responses by no later than December 20th. That's the six week mark from today and having an engineered design completed by, and that's where we don't have a solid date yet. So I wanted to get everyone's input on what we should be doing for an engineered design um, deadline. Do you, do you have an assessment of, of Tidewater's capacity to do everything that they're, uh, with all the towns that have, are, are engaging at least to talk to them? You know, do they have the engineering capacity to do all the build out that they're that they're talking to towns about? I think we'll probably definitely have a much better. I, I believe they do. I would have to say we'll get a much better answer once we have the feasibility report from them. And then as far as uh, like timeline, too, do you mean as far as they've they're kind of busy everywhere i think it i think a full expansion is going to definitely take time because there's a lot of constraints on supply and labor so right that's yeah. true do we well, do this, we need that engineered design uh before we go to connect main that's a good question and one i'm not sure i don't know if krista can weigh in or anybody that else yeah they um they will need to check um either get a copy of look at either Bremen's or Bristol's um, connect main applications to see the, the extent of detail. But yes, they would be, I think that basically the way Alex put it is that the feasibility study is the, is the engineering design that would then be used. Like it contains the design that would then have, um, meet the spec for connect main okay. um, applications. As far as we know, the problem is we don't, we haven't seen the latest connect main application. So barring any significant changes to what they're looking for providers to provide, uh, Tidewater would right, they be expected to, to provide that um, engineer design as part of the application. It, it may be, it may be Krista that um, 
the what you send with your application is sort of preliminary design and you get the reward based on that but the actual detail stuff that they're going to need to actually build a thing out to maybe maybe can follow on to that i guess that's probably because if they have to have the engineer design completed that's beyond what they're we're expecting from them now that's going to definitely put off the whole uh connect main thing so i i have a feeling whatever they're coming in with right now it certainly will satisfy connect main uh whether beyond that though uh you know i think a call uh, Hensley, you will uh answer probably answer that question no and that's a good point they did have to do additional design work for example in Bremen after um yeah, I'd say after it was awarded in order to actually build it out, I suppose, but they are required by Connect Main to have it built out within the year of getting the grant. So that, that timeline will you know, remain imposed, um, but that only requires them to build it, you know, they have to pass every home within that year, not necessarily as connected every home. So yeah, for any town looking at this next infrastructure around getting funded there it's you like set yourself up to expect a 20 early 2023 build at the earliest kind of is, right. is the sense i'm getting a lot of isps yeah because there's only so many tech uh, you know uh, people out there in the field that's going to do it with all of these times it's only going to get worse do we have the uh, connect main um deadline for that next grant we don't have it yet. Okay. Hasn't come out yet. There, okay. uh, yeah. But but believe believe me, when it does happen, we're all going to know that day. <laughs> I think Mal was yeah, trying to get in here. Uh, I'd like to follow on with what uh, George said. That uh, I think we need to be clear about what we mean by engineered design, because engineering work uh, is deeper than uh, what would happen. Uh, by uh, you know, just requesting a, an engineered design without some real caveats on it. Yeah, so maybe we should maybe we should change the language to a preliminary design. Makes just a lot more sense to me. Soften it up. Yeah. Thoughts? Or at least a, an engineered design that would satisfy Connect Main's requirements. Yeah, that's something like that. Maybe more in order. Because I'm sure there's going to be more things that they've got to do after the right. That we get the award that will build up to. I mean, there's plenty of time between then and when they're actually going to be out in the field, anyways. Uh, so, and, yes. so, and we should and we should probably ask that. I mean, they're familiar with this process. They know what kind of what level of a design yeah. is needed for for this, you know, to for Connect Main. So. They should have a sense of what it is they need to do. And Krista, uh, having gone through this with Bremen, are you, I know um, Evan asked you a question about that, but can you help shed more light on what we really need? Um, I mean, at this point, I think, well, it really depends on, um, right? Like it isn't a sure thing that you're partnering with Tidewater on this yet, and um, and so that puts you in just a tough position of knowing. I think that the all you can do at this point is really focus on the narrative, which you've done both through the grant applications, um, the MCF planning grant, and the current this RFI process. Just continuing to tighten that narrative and pay attention to the survey and what sets your communities apart. Um, you know, just really taking making sure that the community aspect of of whatever application you end up producing is, is very strong because it does, in our case, in Bruce's case, it did end up really being on, in our case, Tidewater to do um, all the technical aspects of the grant, although it's helpful that you have people on your committee like Mel and, and others who are knowledgeable um, so that they can read, I don't know, any any red flags or that, so that you can have a bit of a say in, in what that network actually looks like and that it meets your your future proof you know, expectations but at this point all you need um what you really need from the rfi is the cost because then you can kind of compare um 
yeah, the cost, then are they actually going to build, you know, fiber as, as their network to everywhere, like reading that preliminary, as you've mentioned, that preliminary information, and then being able to compare costs of different providers, um, assuming that more than just one responds. Is the six-week um, res uh, response process um, required, or can we narrow that down? Uh, that seems sort of, I'm, I'm assuming that these companies have information ready to go to respond to this type of request if they uh, were so inclined. Um, and, you know, if we want to keep this moving quickly, does it make sense to cut that in half? Um, or is that just a standard period that's accepted in these type of requests? I'll, I'll weigh in on that. I think, I mean, Tidewater has a leg up on every other person, every other company. And I think this is more geared to those people like Spectrum that really hasn't gotten in there and done that. I think it's, uh, if it was just Tidewater, then I mean, no problem if you cut it in half easily. Uh, and that, that might uh, push them along a little faster to get their report in that they're doing. I think, I think given we've got some time in there for questions and that sort of thing, I, I don't know. I, I think that probably is uh, as good as you can get. Maybe not, maybe a couple weeks. Yeah, you, you also wanna be conscious. You don't want to, anyone to be able to poke holes in your process and right. um, it's just there's a possibility that someone would come out, oh, well, most towns give a six-week window, and they only gave a three-week, Could just anticipating things like that. Um, mm. And, and yeah, with the fact that it is regional and does include Damascata, I mean, it's, it's again, with the outreach, it's very possible that premium choice or, you know, others who, other fiber providers would, would try to throw something in. Mm-hmm. And I don't think we're necessary. I don't think we're up against the wall on timing because there, the original grant window was supposed to close on January 31st, and that date's just moving back. That was about a month ago, so I'm anticipating at least well into February, mm -hmm. if not into March, right. at, re at least right now. So I don't think that we're so far backed up against the wall on timing. Do they, when they say the window is closed, do they wait until that? period is done before they consider any of the applications yeah i think so they i think typically yeah. whatever time and up and that's the time on whatever day they close the window and then they start looking at the applications after that will there be other grant funders that uh, open up in the interim time that we should consider as well or is are we just focused on connect main and what they um, we'll have available. That's a good question. I think right now Connect Main is all all we're sitting on until we know of anything else that we might qualify for. Krista, can you speak to uh, Island Institute and what might be available? Yeah, Island Institute only has um, planning funds and, and you probably, I mean, I think there are some possibilities being discussed in, at the wider county, Lincoln County level of um, some ways that Island Institute planning grants could help move just regional conversations forward. But um, but there's no, yeah, like Evan said, no infrastructure grant, public, publicly available infrastructure grants other than Connect Maine on the horizon. Oh, there's, there's USDA, but we don't, I, I don't even bother, <laughs> is, is um, off the record my advice there. Um, but the, that does raise an important, yes, possible conversation for your committee to start having around other types of investment besides just public grants or public subsidy and whether, um, especially just starting conversations, because the thing is, it's also not a done deal that if you and Tidewater do apply to Connect Maine, yep. that it will, you know, get, get accepted. I mean, Tidewater has a very good record at this point. Um, of uh, receiving Connect Maine grants with communities, but um, but that doesn't mean that, that there'll be enough money in this upcoming round. So I think starting some conversations around um, private impact investors um, in 
in, in your region. Uh, the main philanthropy association is starting to have a lot more conversations about broadband and how they can direct private donors to, um, to just see the value of investing in broadband in their community. Um, and, and that's a topic that, um, that I'm happy to look up, you know, try to get some resources and see if anyone on, on your committee is interested in pursuing that angle a little more regardless, even in addition to Connect Maine, because it might be that um, Tidewater comes up with a proposal or whoever <laughs> comes up with a proposal that has Connect Maine meeting up to 20% of the bills and Tidewater meeting 50% and the town's expected to do 30% or something, which would just be astronomical um, for for some of your town's budgets. They, just towns aren't used to necessarily putting those kinds of um, funds forward. So then comes the question of will your town need to take out a bond or look at, again, raising. Bristol did a bunch of fundraising and, and got some big, and they got a $100,000 donation, at least one. Um, so that kind of um, funding sources uh, is, is worth finding out more information about, and I could try to chase some of it down. The only other thing oh, yeah. hanging out on a limb is really the county ARPA money, which I don't think Lincoln County is advocate, has uh, allocated to any funding method yet. So there's a possibility we could definitely pick up some level of a public match for that towards in, in with the Connect Main grant at the same time. But I think we would need to be a little bit more uh, organized and be lobbying for it because there's a lot of people and a lot of different groups that are got their arms out for that yeah. pot of money well it's six million dollars out there so plus right of, yeah um david uh since you're a selectman at newcastle you might want to discuss with uh the town manager i don't know what the current uh bonding limits that newcastle has but it i know dan Mascotta has bonded a lot of road work and that sort of thing over the past number of years and it's worked out very well uh i don't know newcastles yeah heard. and i'm not sure uh, how that limit is affected by us um, being the conduit for lincoln academy in its 10 million dollar bond if that, well, that, I, I that guess may tip us right over the scale so i hope yeah, not right, but, right yeah but that's something that's a good question george and i'll look into that okay yeah, you might. I don't know, Evan. Do you talk to Mary Ellen uh, regarding yep. the what? I know the question comes up at the uh, regional planning meetings uh, as to what the uh, status is of them, you know, figuring out what they're going to do with the money. I haven't heard anything new yet. I just yeah. know that there every anybody that had any uh, big, expensive, lofty ideas was throwing them out there and seeing right. if anything was going to stick to the wall. So. Right. Other and people I, would probably call us that lofty idea, but anyway. Well, probably wouldn't hurt to, to right. I don't know what the process would be, certainly put it in writing, something in writing uh, that uh, we don't know numbers yet, but you know, we certainly would be interested. In, yeah, uh, I agree. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, try and put something together that we can uh, send to the commissioners or, or whoever <laughs> at this point. Is Mary Trescott, uh, is she Lincoln County, David, or is she? Uh... Newcastle, Nobleboro, and maybe Damascotta, I think. Okay. Yeah. I'm double. She, she's, one of, she's one of the three commissioners. One of the three. Right. And I think her district has at least three towns, yep. uh, maybe more. I'm checking right now. But I know she's definitely Newcastle. Yep, and Damascotta. Yep. And Damascotta. And are you all aware of what your um, respective towns are? planning to do with our allotments, the, the town specific funds? Damascotta's I think is pretty well taken care of and gone as far as on wastewater things. I don't know about Newcastle, David. Well, it's um, it, it's sounding like it may be already earmarked, but I'm not going to give up the fight yet. Um, so uh, I'm hoping that we could get some of it, but nothing is certain yet. They know that uh, this broadband thing is a big thing now and it should happen now, whether or not that translates into 
you know, uh, a grant from that, but um, fingers crossed. I'm not ruling it out yet. The, uh, I, I know they'll, they'll, whenever the, I guess it's the infrastructure has been voted. I don't know how much uh, that's getting allocated to the state of Maine or how that conduit's going, but that's gonna be a significant amount of money. True. So does everybody feel comfortable with the language I posted in the chat? The committee anticipates receiving responses by no later than December 20th and having a preliminary engineered design that would satisfy Connect Maine completed by, and then we just need to create a formal mean? date. Probably not make it Christmas Eve. That probably would be in poor taste. Yeah, right. yeah. Or, or you know, maybe uh, second week in January. Well, let's see. Well, if it's the, if it's the, yeah, no, it should be really soon because I have a feeling right. that they'll have a pretty darn good idea with the report that's coming out from Casco Bay uh, on what this whole thing is actually going to cost right. uh, them or the whole thing, which is really the important number. So I would say maybe about the end of the first week in January. January 7th. Yeah. That's a Friday. Okay. Throw it out there anyways. Okay. We'll so explain in. explain to me why we can't have a December date. Is that too soon? It's a good question. It's uh we can talk about it. Well, we need to um we're receiving the responses by the 20th, but then we have to make a meet and make a decision on who's gonna be doing it. Okay. Uh right. We should, yeah. So we'll maybe, end up scheduling another meet, um, probably an off. A weird you know off-week meeting. You know how it would be better to word is have that completed by X number of days or weeks after receiving the notice of selection. Then, then the you know the that date is dependent entirely on when they, we notify that they've been selected. Because for whatever reason that may get bumped, you know the decision date. But or you can put in the date. And just let that be uh, changed if needed. Two weeks after selection. Let's give that a try. So that's why connect main completed by two weeks after committee selection. Yeah. that in here real quick do we do we say anything evan about uh, having the um the selected company actually uh filling out the application for connect main i can't remember how that's worded in there. that's not i don't believe that that is um in this let me look through it again I don't remember. I don't remember going through that and doing it. Um, no, I don't. I don't believe it's. I don't believe that's in here. I mean, it would because I'm just trying to think of what you're going to get for them because uh, they're going to um, respond to this, but their their price for doing the work needs to include the work that's going to take to connect uh, with. Uh, connect main app and have them not assume that we're going to be doing it. I guess that's the, do we, do we want to have them do that? That's the next question. I think that, I think it's in their own best interest. So I, 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 I know that you're right. I just think that if this goes the way that it, we think it's going to, then it should be much in their best interest to uh, be handling that themselves. And then we yeah. would do right. oversight seeing how they've had successful um, applications before that they've written. Yeah. Chris, Krista, what uh, LCI helped or Tidewater helped with the Bremen um, application, right? For Connect Maine? Yes, definitely. Alan was very um, involved in, yeah, straight, really was the, the main person writing it just with a lot of contributions of text from the committee. But ultimately, it's the committee that submits it, or the towns. Is that correct? They have an option. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. 
Yeah, yeah, ours is joint, but go ahead, Evan. That's what I was going to say is that they have a they have a community driven application on Connect Main, and they have the provider um, driven application. Is there which is a essentially the no? It's basically the, the same thing, rates? but it's I could not tell you. I would have to look if they even uh, make that designation on the grants that have been awarded. I did have actually yeah. two other short comments. If uh, go ahead. Uh, one is um, on the document in the community background uh, section 3.1. We should mention the fact that these towns are hubs for education. Yep, I did um, see. Because, uh, uh, yep, that's a good point. Tom had put that in, I believe. Yep. Oh, good. Yeah, maybe it's not in the version I have. Maybe you're looking at an older oh, one. Oh, no, we just, he, we just, he just added it to the chat. Yep, in the comments. Okay. So, yeah, I was going to yep. address that and say, yes, we'll make a note on education. And and the second point is uh, okay. in the proposed project, section 5.3. Um, so there's some indication here you, you throw off uh, whether an engineer design would target speeds of 50, 100, 100, 100, and or 1,000, 1,000. Why are we, I mean, if Connect Maine is saying, you know, minimum specification for acceptable broadband is 100, 100, let's not give everyone, anyone the opportunity to provide less than that. I don't see a, a reason to have anything under 100, 100 in the specification. Well, that's, I think that's going to be the federal standard. State right now is 50, 10, federal is 25, 3. But, um, <laughs> but I do, but I do see your point. And then the state broadband definition is 100 100 and i did yeah this may have been a uh, i would i would agree with you we took out some uh lower speed language in the above sections from when this was previously used and you know, as think, and as you know uh, the, the the cable companies often use language like speeds up to right and i think we need to make clear that we're looking for you know real world um real world world measured speeds that are consistent with yeah, com committed rates rather than we need committed yeah. rates from them. Well, yes, but I think I think in, uh, added to that is that well, yes, hundred hundred is uh, is they can provide that, but that's only if you pay a good bit of money per month for that speed. Uh, they have on their website they have two prices. One is for fifty, the fifty ten. I think it is. At like sixty nine dollars a month, and I can't remember what the hundred, hundred over a hundred. It's eighty nine. Eighty nine. Uh, eighty nine. Whatever. Yeah, I guess I'm thinking of their uh, the TV thing. Oh, so. Well, the the upper level is not hundred hundred. The upper level is hundred and twenty. Right. It's oh. fifty ten and a hundred and one hundred down twenty up. Twenty. Oh, up. Okay. Not, okay. What for for the cable company? No, no from, from from Tidewater. So 100, 100 isn't even uh, a possibility anyways. Unless somebody no, no. Well, anything, anything's possible. We've got 100 up and down at the, uh, at the LCTV TV station, but it's, so, I mean, they can set those levels whatever we want. It's just a question of, of what, what we, you know, Is what it we off ask their for. standard pricing or whatever. Right. And I'd have to look again at what their advertised so deal is. My thought on this too is that we don't want to um, push it so high that we um, don't make coverage or the service available to homes that can't afford the higher speeds. Sure. So we, we want it optimal, but also we want to make it available to the families. I think the, um, I think the, for the, for the grant, I think they're going to prioritize people that use the 100 100 language. But I think okay. ultimately the company would just as easily be able to offer 50 50 just so that they could get subscribers and they would still probably, it all would come out in the wash. Okay. Yeah, quite frankly, it's really only businesses that need that speed, the very right. fast speed. And especially if you have graphics, big graphic files that you need to upload, you, wow. you really need that. I, what I would say is the language here needs to be that we are looking for um, uh, uh, offered minimum speeds of 100, 100. And if a company, as you say, wants to provide 
a lower tier of service, they certainly can, but we need to be able to provide options at 100 100 for anybody who wants it in these towns. I mean, quite frankly, they will provide a in their proposal what they have available or what they might get available. As well too. Yeah, and I think I think uh, we'll we can. So the right now the language is whether the engineer designs wood target speeds of 50 over 10, 100 over 100, and or 1,000 over 1,000, and I'll just add or other standard. What was the term you used, Jeff? Uh, committed rates or other standard committed rates. Yep. Yep. Speed rates. Because the question the, is, is what is what they're proposing for the project? But go yeah, ahead, the, Jeff. The term that's been around for a while is CIR or committed information rate. So um, that's something that you never hear from the cable companies, but you do hear <laughs> from others. Right. <laughs> and that's what I'll use committed or, or other standard committed information rates. Getting, getting back to our discussion of when uh, we need to, the decision point and the engineer design that was in the letter part, if you go into the body of the under response process 2.0, oh, it's, I don't know, it's the third page, whatever it is, it says responses must be received no later than five o'clock on December 20th. Please submit responses as a PDF file, da, da, da. The next paragraph, the target date for a decision is the date. In other words, we need to commit a date uh, yes. that we're going to decide. And that, that probably ought to be that January 7th date, given the fact you can cut all the, the uh, Christmas and New Year's in between there is probably a, a reasonable date that we can decide by. I have no objection. I think that's a pretty good deal as long as we'll have enough people here to come to a consensus which i hope we do oh yeah we'll be we'll be so sick of christmas and new year's we'll <laughs> really like to have a meeting <laughs> and then the only other portion i believe is just below that i'm just scrolling to see if there's anything else i wanted to take care of uh, encouraging potential respondents to join an optional conference call for questions and answers with the committee. This call will take place on time and date, so we need to schedule that possibility and please indicate interest by emailing the address above. So we have the question period is two weeks and then um, conference call, we can schedule something in between, I think, um, November 8th and the four week deadline, I believe would be Perfect. So I will say, let's see, December 6th would be four weeks. So we could say December 3rd, that would be the Friday. Or no, we're scheduling an actual call if they, if respondents want it. So it should be a right. better time period. So let's say the um, next scheduled meeting in Dece into December, we haven't scheduled yet, but the schedule you guys were going on was second and fourth. Monday or the first or, or first first and third might work better for December because second and second and fourth are the 13th and the 27th and the first and third are the sixth and 20th if that sounds more appealing yeah. to everybody yeah. right yeah. okay so the sixth and the 20th we will we'll do the conference call for the sixth at 3 p.m December 6th if we if if we should get any um, calls. So, uh, Evan, clarify for me. So, you're saying that this is a conference call to answer any questions about the what we're looking for, what people right. can provide, and any other questions that we may have for them. I bet we could try and ask at that point as well. So, you're suggesting that on December 6th as well? Yes, we'll set that as okay. a as a okay. date. So are we moving, bumping our um, meetings? Yeah, that's what I. That's yeah. what I was going to suggest. Just because okay. the second and fourth are the thirteenth and the twenty seventh, and people will probably have more yeah. uh, family related things to yeah. get to. No, I, I to agree. Those states. I agree. Wasn't sure if we're switching from mm. then on to the first and third instead of second and fourth. Right. But and then for the twentieth, that will be our six week target. So then we can also <laughs> review anything that's come in yet, and that would be leave two hours for anybody to submit anything new 
after that point. And um, also to clarify, so you're saying on the December 6th meeting, we yep. would have we would have our combined meeting at three o'clock or Correct. would we also and then what time are you proposing for the uh, conference meeting? I would say it's just a it's just a invite thing. So I would say we would Private. just we would okay. just let it go in, into the meeting if we okay. and we and we'll know better. Hopefully by next meeting, if there's going to be any need for a call or anything like that from Spectrum, okay. I anticipate or any other fiber provider. OK. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to look, so we're going to change a little bit of the description information, add in um, more about Dammer Scott and Newcastle, and add in education and other aspects of the communities. Other than that. So in that paragraph that we got a decision mm -hmm. date that has time and date on, on the call, we've settled that so we know when that's going to be December 6th. December 6th for the call. Okay. And then our target date for a decision is January 7th. Yeah, I think that uh, I think that's those are the only yellow marks. I think I'm scrolling down through. Oh, you know what would be good is to put page numbers on these things. Yep, I can do that. I'm constantly forgetting to do that. We can George, definitely do that. George, did you draft most of this? Yeah, I would beg, borrow, and steal from whatever Chris did. Nice, nice job. <laughs> I'm glad it was you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I got, actually, it was, I didn't, hadn't had much done, I think, what was it, the last meeting that we had? And then after that, I sat down one morning and just did it. <laughs> so. Thank you. <laughs> so other than that, I think we're pretty clean. We'll look over some more of the descriptions unless anybody else has any other things I'd like to address. Nope. Um, Under, I, go ahead. Well, I was just uh, for um, next steps. Are you going to make the modifications to the RFI and then go ahead and post it and distribute it? Yes, I was going to email it to um, the Spectrum and Tidewater and also come up okay. with a uh, mailing address for each and then um, submit it to all the that was the that was the next bit I was going to get to is brainstorm everybody we want to send it to. Well, and I think on the both towns' websites. Yep, and sense. then I'll put a I'll put a newspaper listing as well. These are some of the ones that come to mind right off hand: Tidewater, Spectrum, Axiom, GWI, Pioneer. Oh, good. And then under, uh, right Evan, back. Did, yep, go ahead, Krista. Uh, I might have, it might have just cut out. Did you say premium choice? Premium choice. Yep, I'll add that in too. One that has let's not yeah. let's not forget to put a uh, ad in the paper too, um, or wh or whatever the 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 best way to get it publicly out there. So, right, we'll have it we'll have it in the paper and we'll have it on the town websites as well. Yeah. Okay. And then I'll distribute it by um, mail and email yeah, well, to, the, to the incumbents. The only other thing I just double checked on 3.3 .3 project timeline, number two, complete engineering of the system with an associated cost by, that's the two weeks after selection. When funding, and then number four, when funding is awarded, secure the remaining costs as required and authorize the project to start. Hopefully this can happen by, should we say, end of 2022 or, that's a tough one, or maybe we should. It's going to be a tough one to have them right. do it. It's a whole, it's, it says hopefully anyway, so it's yeah, I mean, tying right. to any particular. With, with all deliberate speed. With all deliberate speed. <laughs> And pro probably if there's a system where you paid extra, you get bumped up on the list, but uh, <laughs> I don't think there's many places that want to pay the extra. No, definitely not. I'm sure there's not a system like that anyways. It would be public. Do So do we have to have a date on that? Because we you're saying when the funding is awarded, 
secure the remaining costs as required and authorize the project to start. Um, yeah, I don't know how the other towns, Bremen and Bristol, have yeah. done. Might be able to find out from them what their what what their system has worked, you know, and what what they've asked and gotten. Krista, you have any suggestions for us? Yeah, sorry, specifically, uh, what was the question? <laughs> the uh, last last item on our project timeline, when funding is awarded, secure the remaining costs as required and authorize the project to start. Hopefully this can happen either by or as soon as, and then a blank at that point. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this you might not, if you've already used Connect Main or earlier in the application as a, you know, you might want to even be more over in this RFI that, that you feel you have enough as a community pulled together to be able to partner with the internet service provider in the upcoming Connect Main infrastructure grant application round. I mean, if that's made explicit in this RFI, then um, timeline to a certain extent is determined by right. uh, Connect Main contract. However, I think in addition, I mean, you could, yeah, you could say with um, by one year from being awarded a Connect Main grant, that's kind of how, how they go. But I, yeah, Bremen Bre oh. situation, we knew, we knew that there was going to be a requirement for Tidewater to have um, the fiber passing every home within one year of being awarded, which they met, but then it was really just the committee had to, right, we, we had to um, keep, keep making sure that every home was getting connected in a timely manner, and, and um, that extended another almost six months beyond that one year from the deadline. But, um, you know, any company that partners with you, it's, yeah, it's tough. They're going to be motivated to do it just to avoid bad PR. <laughs> um, so you can decide what, what to say or not say about timeline. Um, and, and certainly if it feels, if it feels like that's a really important point for your community, go ahead and just put an aspirational number in there so that, you know, any, company like that thinks that they could um i don't know the rfi doesn't it isn't a contract so it's not going to hold a right. lot of a lot of weight so i think it's really up to you how much to stress that point to the provider and if you want them to know that time is a, really a priority for for you all then go ahead and say one year <laughs> you know that's not um it's not a bad message to send at this point but it doesn't really have any power <laughs> I mean, one one of the factors uh, that that could become a real issue if town share of this whole project becomes something significant, it may take a while, and even a special town meeting for the yeah. either both towns or or at least one or two of them uh, to figure out what they can commit. Obviously, you can't sign a contract with, say, a sidewater or whoever gets picked, you know, until all those fundings are in place. To me, the one year seems comfortable and reasonable. And as Krista said, it it lets them know what our, we're thinking on this. I mean, what's going to be interesting if, if when all this money becomes available and all the places are getting on the bandwagon, there's going to be not only labor to put it up, but the fiber optic cables. Mm -hmm. the, the amount that they're going to need may be really backed up. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to put, hopefully this can happen within one year of yep. uh, funding being allocated. Yep. George, I got to an answer to your question, sort of. It said um, it depends on who we're doing the bonding with, but right now Newcastle's <laughs> doesn't have a uh, limit identified in any policy or any ordinance. Yeah. So that really, it doesn't really help us much, but um, apparently no limit currently. Yeah. Well, I know, I know like on the parking lot project downtown uh, in terms of what the town, you know, may end up having to put up 
people were doing the flood wall, say, which probably isn't going to get done on the present funding, it could exceed the town's actual budget, administrative budget <laughs> over the town. So, you know, how much you, uh, you know, you can bond and stuff, uh, you know, remains to be seen. Okay. okay. I have a question for the group. Um, uh, I, I, I've talked to a couple of different service providers and I often pose a question when, uh, when, when I tell, tell them that I'm representing Noleboro. I said, um, you know, we're, we're considering joining with Newcastle and Damariscotta to try to get an assessment of when they look at it at a, at a job from an engineering perspective, um, the advantage of working with a larger geographical area for efficiency purposes. Have you folks thought about from your perspective, is Nobleboro joining the effort something that you see as attractive or, or, or not? I think it's a positive uh, in, a, um, in addition, like just Evan, you sent out a link to a radio uh, talk connect. Yep. Um, main calling. That's yep. right. So that yep. talk show had a couple of callers that are relevant. One was an out of Vermont um, uh, organization, an organization that currently does work with a lot of communities in Vermont and Vermont is divided into uh, sort of these broadband geographic areas that are composed of somewhere between 20 and 40 or 50 small towns. Mm -hmm. And they find it much like those organizations go right to the front of the line in terms of um, allocation of manpower. Uh, you know, like those jobs get done first, the bigger the job, the higher the priority and the more muscle that's brought to the task. So right. expanding uh, to a larger group, I think makes it more attractive for connect for the grant process, but also more attractive for the provider to get in there and do the work. Um, they also, by the way, had a caller from Starlink, uh, a Starlink customer, one of the beta call, uh, users who had very positive things to say about the service he's getting with lower uh, orbit satellites. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting too. Yeah, I had a conversation with a representative from GWI and another one from some outfit in the Southwest. And I asked the question about, you know, the three towns and, and uh, I happen to be in favor of the three towns, but I'm only one person on that committee. So it's under, still under discussion, but. Uh, I, I think it's a, I think it's a good idea in the, and I think we'll know when you got, when you guys have your feasibility study and then the, these, this joint feasibility study uh, that's, a good conversation that hopefully we can all have with Tidewater or any other rep that we all select. Right. That um, whether putting it all onto one application makes the best sense for them, which I would hint toward it does. Mm -hmm. And the only other thing would be filling in any other work that Nobleboro hasn't done that we may have done and vice versa. Right. Right. One, yeah. one question, Stephen, uh, does uh, Tidewater have a, a significant amount of fiber optic in the world? Uh, yes, yes. They do, okay. And I've yeah. got a map to that that includes Newcastle and Damariscotta. So I'll be sending you guys the link to um, the online folder that we made with all of our relevant documents. Okay. It's on, it's on in Nobleboro, it, it's, uh, there are fiber trunks throughout most of the town, uh, but having a trunk and having access to that trunk are two different things. And mm -hmm. so um, I, I, I'm, I live off West Neck Road and which goes out to Camp Kiev. So we were one of the first roads to get um, a fiber. And then I was probably the second or third house to get it, get it to my home. And uh, so I've had it since they started. In no they, do they come off of that main trunk line to the runouts to the houses or do they have to run a whole another line? I think they run another line. Yeah, um, I thought so too. Yeah. Yeah. Is this is this um, the Noble Borough potential partnership with us? Um, should that be mentioned somewhere in the RFI? Because right now it isn't yeah. at all. I, right? I don't think we should at this point. I think we should go ahead with our schedule and then where they coincide is when the grant gets applied for. 
ultimately at this point. So can you clarify too, somebody mentioned Noble Borough's feasibility study. Are you are working a, on that? They had a, a similar one that they, correct me if I'm wrong, Marty, you would know better than me. Not necessarily, well, I, not, I might not know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think the, in, the information sharing on your committee uh, is, uh, is quite a, frankly, is better than the information sharing on the Noble Borough Committee. Um, but that's, <laughs> that's I believe a, they uh, I believe they agreed to do the same feasibility study that we did. Krista, you might know that point if you can still hear us. Yeah, sorry, I'm just um, getting to <laughs> 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 a crying baby. So. <laughs> More important <laughs> stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, but um, uh, but and. Yes. So one more time with the question. Oh, Noble Borough and their fees <laughs> has a feasibility study as well. Correct. With yep. Tidewater. Yep. Okay. Yeah. But they're doing in-house, not through Brian with so, I see. Um, so that's why the timeline might be slightly different, but I, I would say just as a question of teaming up. Yeah. Asking that directly to, to Tidewater is an important question. You know, like, would you view these as one project? Um, but I think, uh, based on the way Tidewater is now working as a project-based company, um, the reason it would be a benefit to bundle together um, would be that they're really, they're kind of, they're wrapping up one project before focusing on the next. Um, mm -hmm. And if you are all individual towns, then it would, it would really be like one town would have to be totally complete before they can move on to the next one. Um, Whereas they might be able to just build out in a way that that makes a little more right. sense and isn't based on town lines. Um, if you were you teamed up, yeah. I mean, the only the only issue if you brought in Noble Borough later would be it's probably going to be a delay in getting the the Connect Main application in. Oh, yeah. Okay. And I, go ahead, yeah, Stephen. I, I I was just going to say I agree with that, but also. You know, you can imagine a scenario where a respondent to the RFI would have been happy to do Newcastle and Damascata, but maybe is put off by the fact that they have to run, for some reason, additional cable to another town. Like, I, I just worry about, you know, the perception of our partner. I mean, I know we all think it's going to be Tidewater, and it's great that Tidewater has trunks out there, but if you're putting out this and you're sending it to Axiom and GWI and others, they may look at like their manpower and resources and and underestimate, you know, eventual availability because we're changing the scope mm -hmm. of no, the project that we're proposing for them. <clears throat> well, I think yeah, um, that's a question we all have. We've been working on this for a long time and we're trying to do community, but I think Tim had mentioned it before and was concerned understandably about before we even joined with Damascata, but Damascata seems to be getting pretty well up to speed with us. So my thought about that is if Nobleboro was going to join, at what point would we decide that it was okay? And would we want to set a deadline with Nobleboro? Um, because I, Marty would, I would think that um, ultimately the combining would most likely be just at the grant level. And okay. Krista could probably weigh in on that because it would be if, and we'll have to have this conversation with Tidewater like the minute that we get the um, feasibility study. But ultimately, if they have vested interest in writing the grant, they have vested interest in roping Nobleboro into this one project that they're applying for, we can add our bit to make it go faster. Nobleboro can add their bit to make it go faster, but more independently, but it's all under one grant application. That's kind of the framework that I see quick, most quickly in my mind is that the committee work that's pr that's uh, co that's preliminary to the grant application would probably not coincide as much, but we could definitely share information and everything we learned and any other experiences we can if, if it looks like that they're also going to be a part of the application, I think, is a good mm -hmm. way to look at it. The only problem, you got to make sure that you don't lose, hold off the application to Connect Main if you oh, yeah. go to three and lose the window. Right. That next, that's, right. That's probably the most crucial thing. Yep. And I don't, I don't disagree with you. Yeah. But. And Nobleboro is also, uh, you know, 
putting an application into Connect Main. So, uh, for planning or for infrastructure, um, I I think well I think that we the planning one uh, that was the five thousand dollar one could have been uh, I don't yeah I, I wouldn't know I that, yeah that yeah. that I think has already been awarded and it's, so it's the 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 infrastructure perfect and that's what we're that's what we're all waiting on is yeah. what we're what we're all going to look like um so i'm going to have those just to wrap up the meeting i'll have the rfi uh fixed up we'll send that out um this afternoon the next meeting is the 22nd at three o'clock and the only other thing is I'll be sending you all a link on Google Drive to our shared documents. And I'll also send you a link for that as well, Marty. So you okay, can so share you some to, of that. Do you want to take a formal vote on sure. approving the RFI? I think that's important. Uh, Would love to take a vote on approving the RFI to be sent to the internet service providers. After corrections or after correction changes. after corrections are made. Seeing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Six, seven, eight eyes <laughs> and no nays. We have approved and we'll be sending the RFIs later this afternoon. And Evan on the twenty second, will we have the uh, presentation by Tidewater? I am going to work really hard this week on confirming that and hopefully we'll, I'm hoping um, that we can have it probably in the Damariscotta meeting room. We've got a big TV if anybody wants to come in in person to see it and then we can also dual do it on Zoom the way they've been doing it at the selectmen's meetings. We could double down if anybody's not comfortable joining in the meeting room, but I think we've got plenty of space here for uh, a dozen or more people if that's something that everybody would, might be interested in. Because we really want to see the people in person when we're going to be asking the tough questions. <laughs> right about that. <laughs> um, any, any other thoughts, feelings, concerns before we take off? All righty. Well, thanks, everybody. I'll Thank get you, you that much. file, and we'll plan on 22nd. And any new updates, I'll email to you. Thank, thanks, thanks for your work, Evan. Thank you for your right. work, Evan. Thanks, Thank, you. Thank yeah. you guys for your work. All right, we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.